Rivers are filled with life. They connect us to each other and nature as they flow through the landscape. We depend on them, and their health depends on us. For thousands of years, people have been drawn to rivers. Fish from rivers have been the main course at many dinner tables. Indigenous peoples and settlers use rivers as highways for transporting people and goods. We built towns along them, and they provided water for drinking and growing food. Despite being essential to our way of life, we haven't always treated rivers with care. As towns grew into cities and the country industrialized, we changed the shape and flow of rivers to make navigation easier and impounded them to generate energy. We routinely used them to send stormwater and agricultural, industrial, and human waste downstream, out of sight, out of mind. This use resulted in bare banks and murky, polluted waters with fewer fish and less wildlife. While we've stopped dumping untreated waste into rivers, there's still a lot of work to do until our rivers are healthy. In order to restore rivers, we must understand how they function naturally. Most rivers begin quietly, as trickles of water seep out of the ground or flow from lakes and wetlands. By coming together, these trickles become creeks. Creeks merge into streams, and streams converge to form rivers, growing in power with each step until they reach the ocean. Within a river, flowing water erodes the channel by breaking away small pieces of soil and rock and carrying them downstream. In elevated landscapes, rivers gouge deeper into the land as water continually scours the riverbed. As this happens, riverbanks get so steep that they eventually collapse, widening the channel. In some places, this creates deep valleys or canyons. In flat landscapes, rivers form a snake-like path. This is because water moves fastest along the river's outer bends, eating away at the submerged bank. When left unsupported, the riverbank above crumbles. Sediment is carried downstream and settles to the bottom in the slowest moving water along the river's inner bends, building up the bank and balancing the losses on the outer bend. As long as the water keeps flowing, this process will repeat. Over time, erosion and deposition constantly reshape rivers, and the movement of rivers shapes our landscape. Water levels rise and fall a lot as seasons change and precipitation comes and goes. High water can spill over the banks into surrounding floodplains. During drier months, water levels drop, but rarely dry out entirely thanks to groundwater seeping into the channel. Change is a natural and important part of every river. However, human activity can speed up and magnify this change. When it rains, much of the water that hits natural ground gets absorbed. In cities, buildings and pavement block storm water from soaking into the ground, so the water has to be routed away through pipes to reduce local flooding. In farmlands, man-made ditches and drainage pipes collect and direct water away from fields to drain soils for crops. These features send more water into the river more quickly, causing the river downstream to rise higher and flow faster than normal. Erosion and flooding get worse, threatening property and reducing water quality as more soil and nutrients break away from the banks. At the same time, the water entering from surrounding lands picks up many pollutants. Runoff from each farm, parking lot, business, and yard makes the river's water quality a little worse. Our impacts build up across each place that rivers pass through until they reach the ocean, where all of the combined consequences are felt. Restoring our rivers is a group effort. Fortunately, you can help rivers no matter where you live by taking action to reduce the amount of pollutants and excess water that enters them. At home, keep grass clippings and trash off of the streets, limit the use of lawn chemicals, and add trees and natural areas to your yard. In cities, build features like stormwater ponds and rain gardens, especially in older areas that were built before stormwater treatment was required. On farms, trap and filter runoff. Manage livestock waste, pesticides, and nutrients. Keep soil in place with practices like cover crops and conservation tillage. Throughout the landscape, restore habitats like wetlands, forests, and prairies. Alongside rivers, replace retaining walls with wildlife-friendly alternatives and repair active erosion. 
Finally, re-establish floodplains to give rivers room to breathe and spill over their banks without causing damage. Rivers have supported us for millennia, and we can all support them in return. Check out the resources in the video description to learn more about how to help our rivers. And watch the rest of our animated Our Connection video series to learn more about your role in conservation.